Thank goodness it's still here. Just as splendid as it was in my day. Sorry, I should introduce myself. My name is Sir Bernard Hall, former mayor of Liverpool, a merchant of the town. You must be asking yourselves, what's he got to do with the Flory? Well, I'm the one who's responsible for it being there in the first place. I made plenty of money out of my successful trading businesses. And as a magistrate, I could see how easily young people could get themselves into trouble if they were left to their own devices. I wanted to be sure that the young people of this area had somewhere to go where they could occupy themselves. But why the Florence Institute? People often ask me that question. The answer lies up here. Follow me. Here is the answer. My beloved daughter Florence. She died in Paris at the tender age of 22. I was devastated, as you could imagine. So I decided to have this place built and called it the Florence Institute for Boys in her memory. Some people thought it was a little strange to name a boys club after a daughter, especially as girls couldn't get in when it was first built. Maybe that's true, but the point was it comforted me to know that good work was being done in a place where her memory was being kept alive. Question answered, puzzle solved. I can see that you're attracted to this beautiful stained glass window behind me. It's not the original. That was destroyed when the building was left to rot in a state of disrepair. It's my favorite part of the restoration. Have a good look at it as we go upstairs to the Grand Hall. very strict about things like that. But still, they haven't done a bad job, have they? And seating for over 200 people. Many a social function took place here. Concerts, dances and plays. People came from all over Liverpool to enjoy themselves. Many an artist made his first appearance on this very stage. Some famous names as well. One I've heard about is a fellow called Jerry Marsden, who had a hit with a song about a ferry crossing the Mersey. I might have a go myself, if there's room in the hit parade for an old timer like me. Since my baby left me, I found a new place to dwell. It's down at the bottom of Hill Street Hall. Lorry Hotel. Maybe not. But it wasn't only social events that went on in the Flory. Sport was also very important. Numerous teams soon sprang up, even a baseball team. And more than anything, the Flory became renowned as a centre of excellence for boxing. The famous Golden Gloves team made it their home. Um, you come in the Flory and you can do everything. Um, gymnastics. Swimming, everything you can use for the bats and everything, so it's been a lot of it. Boxing's the greatest thing in the world. As long as you don't want to batter someone, you box it. It's, it's, it's a sport, it's like football. And it's a heck of a sport. I had 280 people fights. And I got beaten twice. And yeah, once in the line, I think it was fantastic. We don't really care, I was only a kid, but trainers used to just come back from the Second World Wars and, and, and the discipline was unbelievable. The gymnasts. The, the gymnast teams, the, 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 uh, the, the football, the fireside football teams, the basketball teams, you name it, it was everything here. 
and these rooms here, and you've got here a team in tennis rooms. And the biggest thing of my life was from when I was in the army, um, doing national service, I was away doing national service in Germany and that, and in the Kings. And I come back and I, when I was 20, I tried to get in the fly, and they wouldn't let me in. They said, you can come in, but you can't do nothing anymore, because you're a man now, you, you don't see that. But the flurry wasn't only a place for keeping the body healthy, it was also a place for healthy minds too. In the early part of the 20th century, there was a huge movement to provide reading opportunities in working class areas so people could learn to read and write and improve their minds. The flurry was no exception. It's said that the boys from the flurry would climb these stairs and look out over the river to see if any boats had arrived. And if they had, the boys would run down to the dockside and see if there was any work. I don't know if this is true or not, but what I do know is that the Flory had a big influence on the young people of the Dingle. How sad I was when the rumours reached me in the 1970s and 80s that the Flory had fell into decline. Towards the end of the 1980s, at the height of the economic slump, funding for the flurry dried up and the building went into disrepair. A pressure group was formed and a battle began to save the flurry. This was helped when the Liverpool Echo adopted it as one of its Stop the Rot buildings. A huge boost was achieved for the campaign when the Heritage Lottery Fund offered £3.7 million towards renovation. Other financial support came from the North West Regional Development Agency and the European Regional Development Fund. At last, the rebuilding began in earnest and the new Flory reopens in January 2012. Once again, its interior rings with the voices of young people actively engaged in creative activities. So we're going to work from what we did last week and then we're going to go right back to the beginning, just to refresh your memories. Moving on just as yes, okay? Oh yeah. Uh, no, actually, yeah. Okay, no, no, just carry on. Yeah. 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 Carry on. Nice, busy. Yeah. Okay. Well, go back again. Now, it's fairly obvious when you speak to a lot of the Florida old boys now to see what impact that had on their lives. And many of them would tell you that without the Flory, they wouldn't be where they are today. Um, so it was very important. It was somewhere for people to go, give them a bit of discipline and help to develop them into uh, mature adults. And what we are trying to do within the Flory is to use some of the lessons that they'd learnt in the past and bring it into the future. So we do have sporting activities in the Flory. 
bringing a little bit of discipline into people who use it. We have a lot of uh, recreational activities as well and the flurry as well. So to extend next time, we're trying to mirror some of the stuff that happened in the flurry and bring it into the 21st century. And the last thing which we do is we have a, a hall upstairs and I say that the usage of that hall is from cradle to grave. So we run birthday parties in the hall and we, we also run funerals in the hall and anything in between, including corporate events in the hall. The Flory, this is a big, massive building, requires significant amount of money to keep it running. And we're hopeful that that hall of sales will be our cash cow, which will generate some income for us so that we can carry on doing the things that we want to do. I would be very pleased if in another 100 years people come and say, I used to go to the Flory and I'm really, really happy. If I didn't go to the Flory, I wouldn't be where I am today. If people say that in 100 years, I'll be very happy. To think that this beautiful building was nearly lost forever. It does my heart no end of good to know that it's still here now serving the community and also keeping my daughter's memory alive. But I'll be back from time to time to make sure everything is running smoothly.